Our first fight on the deuce, an Oriental Rules five-rounder, Stefan Nakima and Krongzak. And the traditional headgear both fighters are wearing in the preparation with ice, getting ready for a hot night. That headgear you see is a traditional Muay Thai, Thai kickboxing type of dress. They'll remove that before the bout begins. There's a little ceremony that they go through according to Thai tradition. There you see part of it. Krongzak is giving a traditional Thai prayer before he begins the action. That rope headband is, is part of the ceremony being removed now by his cornerman. You, you not only feel electricity here in Paris for these fights, but you do get the sense of tradition that goes way, way back in the sport. Particularly these Thai matches, because in Thailand, this is the national sport. In Lumpini Stadium in the center of Bangkok, they regularly draw crowds of 75,000 plus for these type of Thai kickboxing matches. Krongzak, by the way, is the world champion in Muay Thai. He's a star in Bangkok. In fact, he draws 75,000 to 100,000 people to Lampini Stadium. He became the champ, and then, Mike, I guess he got bored and retired, moved to Paris about four years ago, 32 years of age. That's right. Krongzak, known world over as maybe uh, the most famous Thai kickboxer of all time, at the height of his career, 28 years old, he, he moved from, from Bangkok to Paris, was leading a quiet life, but just couldn't stay away from the ring. This is his 10th comeback fight, and folks, 121 and 18, 61 knockouts at the moment. He's number three. You're looking at uh, Stefan Nakiema. He lives in Bangkok, trains in Paris, though. He is the Muay Thai world champion at the moment at 160 pounds. He's number five ISKA in the Oriental Rules. He's 46 and eight, and they tell me, watch his feet. Neither fighter elected to wear foot gear in this Oriental Rules fight. And you hear in the background that traditional Thai music. From bagpipes. Height advantage, obviously, to Stefan Nakimo. Little feeling out period here early. Scheduled to go five rounds. Good crowd here just to get a look at uh, Kronzak, known throughout the world. And through the magic of the deuce, will become known here in this country as well. Akima trying to use his reach, trying a few linear kicks, front kicks, side kicks, a few left jabs. Doesn't seem to quite have his distance yet. And the quick feet. Knocked him down. That's a slip. It just took his feet away from him. Well-timed roundhouse kick there by Nakima. Came right underneath the left roundhouse kick of Krongzak and took out his right leg. It's not counted as a knockdown by the officials. Told you he's got those great feet, quick feet. Very lean and very mean. So um, Krongzak trying to hold on to that foot just a little bit and swing his foot. And there's a good left hand by Nakima. When you see the height advantage Nakima has, does that play a role? It gives Nakima an advantage in reach. If he can use his front kicks, uh, his linear kicks to keep Krongzak at a distance until Nakima wants to fight, it's an advantage for him. On the other hand, Krongzak punching upwards with those strong, powerful legs, he's able to get a, a power advantage over Nakima if he can get close enough to use it. Really can't counter punch very well or counter kick either because of that height advantage. You see the way uh, Nakima just bounces away after he missed. That was an example right there. Nakima was able to reach Krongzak with his roundhouse kick. Krongzak was not able to counter with his. Krongzak did get inside there and delivered one good blow to the chin. There's the left hand, so he's trying to kick with the feet and come in after that. That's the strategy at the moment for Krongzak. A win here tonight would move him up from number three in the world, that's for sure. Two good blows by Nakima. Kronzak tries to answer. Tell you this much, he wasn't phased at all by the punches from the taller Nakima. Kronzak's a tough guy. It's going to take a lot of shots by Nakima to do any real damage on Kronzak. Uh, that body has seen uh, almost 140 fights, and uh, he knows what he's doing. 
No one took a real advantage in this first round. Hey, MCI customers. Now MCI advertises 40% savings with friends and family too basic, but the average... To Fane Nakima, the Muay Thai World Champ at 160, number five in the ISKA, and he had the better of round number one just slightly. Ooh, look at the elbows from Kronse. It's an oriental rules bouts. Depending on the jurisdiction, they can use elbow strikes, and here in Paris they can. In that sequence, you see Nakima coming underneath the left roundhouse kick of Krongzak with his own right roundhouse kick. It looks like he struck more in the groin than on the thigh. Uh, it looked to me like Krongzak went ahead and went down himself to help minimize the damage. Okay, there you see Nakima's trainers blowing in his ear. That's to, uh, that's to test um, the acuity of the fighter to make sure that he's got a clear head and he's listening properly. Rene Desjardins, chief trainer of Nakima, there in the, in the corner in the purple. And we see Sammy Kepchi in the black vest, the promoter of the event. Uh, and a, also a trainer there at that, uh, at that Muay Thai gym in Paris. Nikima sporting the new ISKA logo on the back of his head. Is that it? <laughs> I just want to know, is uh, the acuity checked out okay? I think the acuity is all right, and his logo on the back of the head, I uh, don't know if we'll adopt that one or not, but it is attractive. How did you score around number one, by the way, Mike? I had to give that to Stephane Nikima. Although there was no real damage, he used his reach effectively, particularly his kicking techniques, and I gave him the edge by a half a point. And the pace picks up here in round number two. Krongzak getting aggressive. His corner told him he can't continue to lay back and lose rounds, even if it's only by a half point. Hands a little bit more present than the feet in this round. We see both fighters beginning to use knee strikes now to the body. There's a good elbow. Down they go, and they'll separate from there. Now that is a tactic that we see in Oriental Rules bouts quite often. If one fighter is getting the worst of the inside knee strikes, he'll attempt to go down with the other fighter and have the referee break them. Warning, that kick a little bit low, unintentional. Krongzak is steeped in two decades of tradition uh, with Muay Thai fighting in Bangkok. You notice he carries the traditional Thai garter on his left bicep. Good left hand, two of them. Good combination by Krongzak. He couldn't follow up, but it stunned Nakima momentarily. Young kids grow up around Lampini Stadium in, in Bangkok uh, thinking of Krongzak is uh, the greatest who ever fought. Since a small child, Krongzak wanted to be a Muay Thai hero. Had his first bout into his early teens. I guess four years ago, he figured there was really nothing left, so he decided to change of pace, move to Paris, but couldn't stay away from the game. Just couldn't do it, and, and now he's, he's entering his third decade as a, uh, a Oriental Rules fighter. This is uh, his 140th fight. Good close-up of uh, how you have to be wary, trying to use the knees, protect yourself at the same time. Notice how they've locked them, their arms up and finally they're separated when Nakima slipped to the mat. If you watch closely, you'll see those knee strikes not only to the ribs and, and the torso, but you'll see them to the upper thigh as well. Three minute rounds in this Oriental Rules fight that is scheduled to go five. Good action in this round. Nobody landed the telling punch though, and I'm not sure how you would go with this one. You've given Nakima the slight edge in round number one. You see Kran Kronzak thinks he had won round number two. Does that even it up? I'd have to give that round to Kronzak. He was the aggressor. I think he won the battles inside with the knee strikes landed the better punches just a half a point margin in that round but it does even these two fighters up on my scorecard number three at the moment iska the former champion and i imagine a win here would uh, 
set up a world title fight at some point soon. It's going to put Krongzak in position for a world title shot if he wins. Nikema will move up in the ratings. His history is not as distinguished as Krongzak, but a, a win over Krongzak would make him uh, a top contender overnight. Now, you see them spraying on the front of yeah. the shin. That's, uh, uh, it's no kind of drug. It's, it's just Freon, and it freezes. It, it makes uh, the front of the shin cold instantly, and it helps reduce the sensation that they have on that bone. Here's the inside uh, fighting and strategy that we saw, and then the slip to the mat. I think, I think uh, Krongzak is the one who initiated that takedown. He felt he had done all he was going to do inside with his knees, and he wanted to take Nakima to the mat before he absorbed some knee strikes himself. Round three. Even Steven, the way Mike Sawyer has it on his card. Oriental Rules Division, the toughest of the ISKA fighting divisions. Almost anything goes. In three rounds, so you have to pace yourself a little bit. You have to be in incredible shape, and you'll notice there's no body fat on either of these fighters. And action right off the bat. The right hand did get in. Oh, very aggressive now this round. Nakima taking the lead trying to pin Krongzak up against the ropes, giving him some of his own medicine from the first two rounds. They're just trading leather. There's a good right hand. Oh, what action in this round, Dave. You can barely hear with the crowd. Oh, great left hands by both fighters. And elbow the elbow, strike. too. Left answers, and finally, with the kick... Krongzak got out of the corner. I think Krongzak got the best of that exchange. I think he moved Nakima back. Good left hand, though, by Nakima. Krongzak with a right. This is what the crowd's come to see, is this kind of fight between, between these two top fighters in the Oriental Rules division. Three great punches in a row by Nakima. And Krongzak may be slightly dazed. He's fighting out of instinct here. Look at him come back. That left hand of Krongzak is backing Nakima up again. Crowd on its feet. And I believe that uh, takedown was just to get a bit of a rest. This pace has been intense from the very beginning of round number three. Tremendous round here. And on that takedown, Krongzak got in the best of the knee strikes and wanted to take Nakima down before he took any himself. Both fighters show a bit of fatigue for the first time. What a show they're putting on that elbow. Oh, excellent. Just did get in. Excellent elbow strike by Nakima. I think that's hurt Kronzak momentarily. Doesn't look as aggressive. That elbow got in. It appears that uh, Nakima may be the physically stronger. He does seem to man held. There's a good left hand, too. Look at Krongzak come back with two quick combinations. Left and hand, more. Left hand of Krongzak is, is continually getting in. Three lefts by Krongzak moves Nakima back to the center of the ring. The elbow got in. The better elbows have come from Nakima. Oh, good left hand from Krongzak. I don't know how you score this round. They both had great, great performances. This has been three minutes of action. As hard as it is in this round to pick a winner, I think that Nakima has gotten the best of Krongzak. That was just a slip. This round comes to an end. A great round in Paris. Fans <laughs> were on their feet all of round three. Three minutes of action. Nakima and Krongzak and Mike Sawyer. That was a tough round to call. How did you see it? I had that round a half a point for Nakima. Normally a, a round that's only a half point margin indicates not, not too much happened in that round. But in this case, so much happened. It was hard to pick between a winner. Almost an even round, but I'd have to take Nakima by a slight margin. He landed an elbow strike midway through the round that I don't think Krongzak ever fully recovered from. And here you see Nakima with some of his punches from that round. Got the better of Krongzak inside. Using his reach very effectively that round and good elbow strikes. 
His trainers, Rene Desjardins, Sammy Kepchi, have done an excellent job with this young man. Sammy Kepchi with uh, quite a stable of fighters in Paris, France. Many Middle Eastern fighters have traveled to Paris to train with Sammy Kepchi and with Rene Desjardins. There we see elbow strike by Krongzak that landed high up on the temple of Nakima. Had it landed closer to the eye or on the nose, it probably would have cut him. The elbow, just think about that, the bone right on the cheekbone. That's got to be painful and so easy to knock you out if you get it in the right position. Nakima knows he's in a classic fight here in France, and the crowd has responded. They've been standing even between the rounds. You see some of the spectators on their feet. Certainly one of the most exciting rounds that I think we've ever seen here in Paris. Krongzak trying to uh, psych himself up to get back in. He's maybe thinking, having second thoughts about coming out of retirement. Trying to catch his breath and stalling, and finally he gets up. I don't see Krongzak wanting to quit. I think it's a psychological battle with Nakima. I think he wants Nakima to think he wants to quit. I think the shaking of the head is more getting his wits back about him than anything else. Krongzak, 32 years of age. Nakima much younger. Look at the Nakima trying to throw the knees. That was a little bit of possum, wasn't it? It was. Krongzak came right out at the bell aggressive. He, he's not the kind of fighter that will quit under any circumstances. They'll have to drag him out of the ring before he'll give up. And that's what they said about Roberto Duran until no mas, no mas. Strange things can happen when you're in that ring. Both fighters trying to land the knee. And uh, I think after round number three, both have shown signs of fatigue here. It's hard to get started for round four. That was an elbow that got in. It was Kronzak who threw it. Three round, uh, three minute round of the constant type of action we saw uh, there in round three has to take something out of a fighter. A little slower pace here in the fourth. Two minute rounds, and you gotta get in eight kicks. That's tiring, but three minutes at this pace, that's incredible. That left hand got in. Saw Good. the sweat fly off of Kronzak. Good left by Kronzak, but Nakima continues to use his reach as an advantage, as we see there with those long-range punches. That left leg just missed. This fight very, very close. Scheduled for five. One figures it'll go five. Fatigue beginning to show in Kronzak's face may not be quite as easy as it was a decade ago for uh, for the man from Thailand, a living you, legend. You can hear the chanting. Some say Kronzak, some are saying Nakima. Crowd is split. They just are enjoying this fight immensely. One thing for sure, Dave, there's nobody in this arena uh, that hasn't picked a favorite. Good defense that time by Nakima. Low blow, and he's going to allow Nakima to recover. He's also spotted a cut yeah. high on the head, starting to bleed down into the eye. Now they'll let that go as long as it doesn't, uh, as long as it doesn't appear that it's going to block the vision of Nakima. If the gonna... blood's going to consistently run in the eye, then they'll take a closer look. Otherwise, they'll let this fight go. Well, that is really high up on the head, Mike. Probably was an elbow that landed there and caused that cut. And that gets Nakima going. But Kronzak trying to answer back. Anytime a fighter thinks that he's cut and it could get worse and the fight may end early, he wants to get his licks in now. You saw Kronzak hold the moment and then use the foot to knock him down. That was a tremendous smart move by the veteran. Smart move by a fighter. Uh, it, doesn't look immediately like there's any damage on the fighter who goes down, but every time a fighter has to pick himself up from that canvas, it takes energy. Round four starting to close. Not as eventful as round three, yet a good round, and the cut opened up on the top of the head of Nakima. Good round for Kronza. Sir, I'm Prancer. Oh, ho, ho. Oh. 
I've got this fight even. How have you got it as we go to this final round? Dead even, Dave. Not that there hasn't been action. There's been uh, a, a, a wealth of, of punches, kicks, everything you can think of. Knee strikes, elbows, tremendous battle here. But yeah. each fighter is traded lick for lick. Uh, there hasn't been any even rounds, but the score is, is tied up uh, going into the last round. We have seen a little bit of everything in the crowd, half standing, half ready to get way up in the air to see how this thing will finish. The third rank contender, the fifth rank contender, either winner will be worthy of higher recognition. Or oh, they traded a kick and a jab. That's even Steven there in that exchange. There's a good left hand and a right. Oh, nice, nice combination by Nakima. Moved Krongzak back. I would have thought it would have done more damage, but Krongzak seems to still have his wits about him. Very tough young man. Both uh, really resting a little bit here, and they may do that for 30 seconds or so. You can bet there'll be a flurry at the end. Both down now, and so the referee will break it up. Krongzak executed knee strikes to the upper thigh of Nakima on both sides then. As soon as he'd gotten enough licks in, then he, he took Nakima down. No trade combinations there. No telling blows. Nakima trying to get that right hand in a whole bunch. Krongzak looking to drop in the left hand. Good short right hand by Nakima, but Krongzak follows. That uppercut did get a portion of the chin. There's another right hand by the bigger Nakima. Dave, I just don't know how this fight is going to end. If this keeps either. up to the end, I don't know how the judges are going to pick a winner. Look at the crowd, though, standing. A thrilling performance in Paris, France. It can only be described as one of the finest Oriental Rules fights we've seen in years. Here's your final half minute. That left hand got in, but uh, Krongzak landed two kicks. Krongzak still looking to land that left hand, and he's done it four times during this round, but it just hasn't had the effect on Nakima he was hoping. There will be no knockdowns in this fight. Both fighters physically spent, and this one was a classic. Kronzak knows it. Nakima trying to sway the judges with his hands in the air. And you can see there isn't any gas left in either of these two gentlemen. 15 minutes of fighting. Only three, uh, only four one-minute rest periods in between. Fine display of physical stamina and fighting heart by both of these fighters. Crowd so appreciative, standing for much of the fight. It's in the judges' hands now. How did you have it? I'd have to give the fight to Nakima by a half a point, I believe. Ron Zach contemplating what might be his future at 32 if this decision were to go against him. He thinks he's won that. Sammy Kepsi congratulating him. But there's that left hand that Kronzak was looking to land the entire round. He was willing to do that even at the expense of taking some punches himself. There was a cut opened up on Nakima and Nakima apparently has won this fight. At least he thinks so and so does Kronzak. Now we'll get the official word. It's Kronzak who wins it. What a surprise. I think Kronzak thought Nakima had won this thing.
Uh, it was almost too close to call, Dave. Retains his Muay Thai World Championship and moves up in the ISK Oriental Rules Raiders. His 122nd victory. If you thought that was good,